you have to have a contract to move forward with you through their process, then we have to identify that there is no contract. It's not just to go in there and say, where is the contract, or you know, say there's no contract. It is to simply understand that all contract is law, and law is contract. And if you go back, that even applies to the Constitution. Uh, even has an article in there about uh, you know, they can't abridge contracts. So it is a contract. Now, if there's no contract, then there's no law, and therefore no jurisdiction. Once you establish there's no contract, the court itself loses jurisdiction. Now, you have to know this, but then you have to know what to do with that information, of course. And once you understand that that's the game you need to know, you don't need to know the statutes and codes and the, 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 the hairline things that might have gone wrong. Um, you just have to understand that if there's no jurisdiction, there's no jurisdiction. Now, let me put a warning out here. Warning, big warning. If you caused a harm to another person, a lot of these rules don't apply because that's what really what's called common law. It's, it's a do no harm clause in the law. If you've caused a harm or you even endangered someone, maybe you didn't cause them a harm, but you did do something foolish to endanger them, well, then you probably need to deal with that. And many of the techniques we talk about here uh, do not apply. This is not a way of getting away with something. It's a matter of simply asking for correction. And if the other party cannot provide that correction, then they have a defect in their case. So this is all about defects, okay? It's not about getting away with something. If anybody assumes that, you're just simply playing wrong because what's common law kicks in, it gets a lot more, uh, it changes things quite a bit. So let's talk about contracts though. We're talking about mostly those situations where some agency or attorney is just coming out to you for some piece of paper. Uh, so we need to overstand the power of words and what's going on in court. One must first know that all civil and criminal courts today are contract courts under the rules of admiralty maritime. And sometimes they refer to those as statutes. Those are also admiralty maritime terms. And they're effectively only dealing with contracts, so or really a lack thereof in most cases. In actuality, due to fictitious conveyance of language, you can learn that word and hear that a lot in our class, uh, that they are using on people with words that are not clearly defined within the documents being presented, there is no contract. And I'm going to cover that in just a minute, so stay tuned. There is only offer and acceptance by default. And they'll come in and offer you something, and if you accept it, then you just enter it into an agreement, but it's not a contract. Therefore, be careful what you consent to. Rarely is there a valid contract, and therefore it is the authority, therefore is the authority or jurisdiction proven and authenticated by material fact witness? Well, no, it's not. Unless you accept their defective offer, and this is what they train you to do all the time, because we go in there and we're afraid, and we don't use our common sense. It's an offer, not a contract. Elements of contract and what they are really doing to you. So you have to know the game that is really going on. It's not going to be what's right there in front of you and what you think is happening. If you go take what I'm teaching you here and go sit in on some arraignments of criminal arraignments, go find a, a courthouse near you, go sit in and watch it, and keep in mind that they're going to implement these elements of contract in there, or at least they're going to get people to accept but let's ask some questions as we go through that process. So first of all, one, parties competent to contract. The parties to a contract should be competent, being of age of consent and sound mind, not disqualified from contracting by law to which he or she is subject. A flaw in capacity may, do, may be due to uh, minority, lunacy, idiocy, drunkenness, or dissimilarity of kind. The parties should be of the same kind. This is very important being either legal fiction actors or living men or women. You can't be both. You can't mix. So this allowing more than two parties, but never a mixture of these kinds in their respective jurisdictions. When they come into court, they're going to call you by a legal name, not by your given name. That legal name is a recorded fictional entity with the Secretary of State, right along with other corporations, where they house your birth certificates. Go down to your uh, department where you get birth certificates and just take a look and watch what's going on. It's there with all the other corporations. When they're identifying you, they're asking if you will stand in for and be the corporation. It's not you. This is a hard concept for a lot of people to get. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. 
everything. Look at your, your, your mail. Look at your documents. Look at your driver's license. Look at all the basic legal things that they put on you. And they're going to either use a fictional name. That would probably be all capital letters or something with a middle initial. And that's, or maybe not even listed the way it was actually listed on your original hospital birth record, which is last name, comma, first, middle. That's how it's usually done on that original document. But then they switch it and create a legal entity for you to manage your estate through. It's that estate that they're after, not you. So are you a mere entity or a fictional thing? Well, they go on and try to establish this further. Two, free and genuine consent. The consent of the parties to the agreement must be free and genuine. The consent of the parties should not be obtained by misrepresentation, fraud, we'll talk about language words they use, undue influence, coercion, they, you know, they scare you into coming in and doing something, or mistake. If the consent is obtained by any of these means, then the contract is not valid or legally lawfully enforceable. If they know this. They know they've done all these things to you when they bring you in under an arrest or into a suit situation quite often. And here's the key. They get you to simply accept an offer rather than bind yourself into a contract. And then you voluntarily proceed. That's when you waive these things. Don't waive these things. Did you know you were consenting voluntarily? Was it clearly explained that this is what was actually going on? Did your attorney even explain it to you this way? And I assure you, I've rarely ever heard one be able to do that. Three, full disclosure. When negotiating a contract, full disclosure is the step of providing all material information and telling the whole truth about the matter, which may influence the decision-making of the other party or parties before they decide to enter into a contract. If either party fails to fully to a full to make full disclosure, the contract is null and void. Now, did they fully disclose all of this was going on? Whenever you had less had to go to court for something or deal with a legal issue? Uh, probably not. Or deal with a mortgage contract issue or a tax issue, whatever it is. There's there's always a court going on. It's the piece of paper is the court. We'll teach you this in the in the class. It's not the room you go to. It's the paper. The paper itself is called within the four corners rule. If it's not properly in there, there is no court. Four valuable consideration. The consideration of something of value possessed by the parties that is brought to the contract table. This uh, something of value is bargained for and given in exchange for a promise or performance. The parties must each receive a benefit from each other, from each, and suffer a detriment. To be enforceable, a contract must have valuable consideration. The contract is unenforceable if it is insufficient or unequal consideration without agreement. This is why they do offers and acceptance, because with an offer and acceptance, they don't need to bind themselves to a contract. See, they never want to bind themselves to this kind of an agreement or a contract. But they will make an offer, and you can accept it, and sign a defective document and walk right, in, rock right into jail or rock right into a suit or a judgment. Okay? They know this is where they can take you because you understand these basic words on this piece, this slide you see right here. So they're going to, at some point, have you give a signature and perform, promise to perform. And when you enter a plea, for example, and it's either not, not guilty or not guilty, or you just simply show up saying, I am proceeding as named, You've essentially entered into a, a agreement, somewhat like a contract, but it doesn't meet all these conditions now, does it? Five, certainty of terms. The terms and conditions of the contract must be fully disclosed and agreed upon and must be certain and fixed. Any subsequent variation of these terms must be agreed. Now ask yourself, did they disclose this when you signed a tax form or driver's license form or some other form with the government? Or we sign down to a mortgage or a credit card. Yeah, they kind of do, but the words on the document themselves are fictitious and misleading and not defined. So did they disclose? Did they? Did you fully understand it? Fully. Fully. Probably not. Six, meeting of the minds. The meeting of the minds consensus at any item occurs between the parties when they recognize each other, understand their mutual obligations, and agree. A meeting of the mind occurs between living men and women in lawful matters, that is under common law, and between legal fiction actors, 
and that would be your entity name in legal matters. That would be an admiralty maritime jurisdiction. A contract must be either lawful or legal. You can't mix the two. Once a party once a party to a contract makes a signature as an accommodation party to a legal fiction person, which is what they get you to do all the time on all your contracts that you sign or presume contracts, while the other party makes an autograph for the living man or woman, the parties are of unequal kinds and the contract is null and void, equaling no contract. So if we don't even get into the very words and language, the very procedures and the parties they're mixing together here are improper and therefore there is no contract even though they can still get you to walk right into jail right that's because you walk forward under these presumptions of a mere offer and exception offer, offer and acceptance excuse me so uh seven autographs and signatures lawful written contracts between living men and women must carry the wet ink autographs of the parties comprising living identification such as a thumbprint or more often living standing is recognized by an unambiguous declaration with the handwritten wedding autograph including the prefix by by before your name colon and or the words all rights reserved or without prejudice written near or below it when you do this it alters the signature into a autograph and by the way the autograph should be clearly almost printed from what i've seen in the examples uh, because then there's no ambiguity it's whose uh, name is there and and of course in the format you want it to show so legal written contracts between legal fiction actors must carry the wedding signatures of the parties as an accommodation from a man or woman you want to identify you're a man or woman when you put those words on there that further identifies it does this automatically stop them from messing with you no, but it gives you a tool to use when you need to bring it up later. So don't expect them to lay down and say, ha ha, you got me. No, you just do it procedurally and you continue to follow up until you win. Eight, uh, privity of contract. A contract exists only between the parties. No third party can obtain rights contained within the contract or buy or sell a contract without the express permission of the original parties. Now, remember, you're operating at an estate going through commerce, and this court is trying to get themselves into your contract. They want to make themselves a beneficiary of 